What's up, you guys? I'm Bad Jack JW, or uh, the otherwise, you're watching the Combat 86 Radio Show. And I'm Bad Jack JW. This is more or less going to be kind of a uh, just a rambling kind of a video. Um, this one's about the grips that I make that you have either seen a little bit on this channel, but definitely on the main channel. So if you're one of those uh, subscribers that is a crossover from the Bat Jack JW channel to this channel, you know what I'm talking about. All right, now that I've confused you, right? <laughs> anyway, um, I got my uh, light set up right here. I'm actually, I just got done pouring a brand new set of grips that I'm gonna test out. I've been tinkering around a lot with different techniques on how to age the grips. Um, basically, you know, this is some I bought from the store. I bought these off of Brownells. They originally come to you um, white, and I stained these actually myself. Whoops, almost kicked the camera over. Sorry, guys. Um, I stained these. I stained them with leather dye. And you can see they've turned pretty decent, you know? Not bad. Um, that's kind of pretty much what John Wayne's gun looks like in his movies. And um, I. Uh, wound up buying getting further into it and then wound up buying some other stuff but I wanted to share with you um, on this channel just in case you don't know the whole story how this crazy uh, adventure happened and it was basically with me purchasing the rooster shooter firearm from Cimarron those of you that know what that is um, if you don't what it is is it's a six gun cowboy action single action um, I guess it's mostly uh, synonymous with the cowboy gun. Sorry if you can't see me, the lighting is kind of bad in here. Um, but I bought that and it came with some some synthetic grips on it that were yellow or aged or whatnot. Um, and they broke. <laughs> I dropped the gun and it broke and that sucked. And I was pretty bummed out. Um, I looked on the other side, I you know took the grips off, looked on the other side, found the company that was Bar S that made them. Next morning, uh, first thing I did was went to their website, uh, this was at night, uh, and went to their website and called them in the morning, no answer, called Cimarron, told them what happened. They said basically, well, those grips from them are no longer available, they're trying to create, uh, try to get somebody to remake them and everything. Um, in the long run, honestly, I was very dissatisfied with Cimarron's customer service on that point. Uh, they make, an, they import a very good product, but their customer service department, they need a little work. That was, I must admit, I'm going to be brutally honest with you guys. I wish customer service with Cimarron was better. But anyway, so what it led me to doing was looking at the grips for a while, and I decided that it seemed like something I could make because it seemed like it was something out of cast resin and so I started looking around at it uh, this is after buying a pair of Hogue polymer ivory grips and trying to um, stain those which did not work I had to check on the dog find out what she was doing but anyway I tried to stain the Hogue ones they didn't work out um, for something about Hogue's product and that they're whatever they're using that poly uh, I think it's polymer actually um, it's pretty indestructible it's it, I, I've tried uh, food coloring uh, fabric dye tea coffee you know you name it I've tried it I've tried even just straight up uh, uh, sharpie marker ink breaking open the marker and all that but um, it didn't take the staining at all uh, the last thing I did I did try was the leather dye, which um, by then I had bought uh, bought these and everything, and that worked. So and actually, in the beginning of the uh, Bat Jack JW channel, when you see some of these this kind of grips, this is what was on that gun. So as I started to look into it and figure out how to do my own in the process, um, these are some I bought from a company called Buffalo Brothers. And they make a fantastic product. I definitely highly recommend if you know this if I was gonna spend the money, which is basically 
expect to spend anywhere from between 70 to 100 bucks or maybe just a little bit more um, for some of these types of grips this is the ones made by Buffalo Brothers you can see they added the finger grooves and this is what is called their antique ivory uh, aged antique ivory so this is put together as a one-piece grip so I get the block in the middle that actually um, is a really excellent way to install these so but um, as you can know as you can figure with shipping and handling and everything um, it comes out to just around under $90 I think it's like 80 something dollars um, so they make a great product but me wanting to experiment with more and without it costing me a hundred bucks of time basically you know ninety dollars or whatever um and trying to see like all you know test out all these other different flavors um i started to dabble around back into it myself first key to when i started doing this was getting a really good mold and that was not easy until i finally figured out a way to do it which is basically making it out of uh, plaster um, it was just hands down the best way so I've got a variety of grips that I've made and you guys have seen it here and there on the channel so here is a set that I made with the finger grooves and I know by no means I am no professional um, these are a little bit more uh, white with the aging process this is in the beginning when I was just kind of testing out different methods of aging it sorry for the dogs barking and everything that seems to that's kind of a thing in this neighborhood so there's the finger grooves with the age through it um, how you get it to shine up like that is the it is brutal uh, making these because you're I'm doing everything by hand uh, making the mold all that kind of stuff so um, right down to sanding it you know hand sanding it I start with 180 and this is all wet wet sand so I uh, buy the waterproof sandpaper from the hardware store I run it under the sink and I start with 180 to take it completely from the rough cast down and then hit it with 220 320 400 600 and then all the way down to 1500 and then um, how you get the nice polish is I actually use, use car wax or car car polish um, flits flits works um, flits metal polish or whatever um, fiberglass polish or uh, shimmer chrome or hapitch whatever you want to call it this stuff's good stuff too here's another set this is before I use this is a different type of method of aging this is more of the uh, marbling so you can see these have more of a different unique marbling going through it I've already traced this one out uh, I don't know if you'll see it in the light because this is red, but I've already started tracing it out for uh, fitting these to my my personal gun. I sent a, um, I sent a pair to Steve over at Michigan Arms. Uh, he's got a YouTube channel. I sent a pair to him. I was going to send another pair to another guy, um, but I also did make sure I sent a pair to um, Badman Bullets, Patrick, because he sponsors the main channel with of my reloading components basically my roll ed and stuff like that but I just wanted to share something back with them and get their input anyway so that's another pair this is another set I made I'm really liking these these have kind of an age to them this is the using a different method of aging so and I got the other side each pour each one is unique in itself and you can see this one I've already dropped it I was filming a video with it for the main channel and I dropped it right at the end of the video um, and see there again you know that would have been a pretty bad heartache if this would have cost me 100 bucks or 90 bucks or 80 bucks or whatever still if you know but in in the end all it really cost me was a little bit of resin in my time so uh, but that's okay. I'm going to be able to shape those up and still use them. So I got over here some other stuff I was working on. This is a prototype kind of a thing. This is another. I'm just trying to dabble around a little bit with a, a further aging process and making them a little bit more rotted looking. And then now 
starting to get some cracks and stuff going through to heavily antique it so I'm just trying to work on a um, kind of like a program in a sense I'm trying to like create like okay this is my take on this this ivory this is my take on this next step of aging and aging and just try to work out all the way to where I got the heaviest aging you can have without it looking like just complete rot on your gun <laughs> per se um, here's another kind of prototype I was working on now this one's got some pretty heavy streaks through it um, including cracking and um, the aging process so this one's got a lot of cracks it probably won't show up in a video but it's got a lot of surface cracks um, the cracks don't seem to affect the um, durability so watch it me break it right here on the camera but it didn't seem to affect it so it seems to be all right um, here's another set I kind of just had laying around that I did um, these ones again this is all because of John Wayne <laughs> because he had um, pairs of yellow stock uh, you know plastic type grips on his gun so it's all because of that <laughs> the Duke anyway and uh, my fascination with um, his final film the shootist where he had some really really awesome grips in that in that movie uh, on his guns and they were made by great great Western and from what I understand they were real they were actually real ivory go figure so anyway I figured I'd share the little step and process again I got I got some curing right now um, I found that the source of light is extremely important because the heat the heat helps it cure regardless of whatever they told me at the the, um, the surfboard place about this I found that um, that the heat plays a big factor in it so I kind of created a little uh, enclosure here with the 100, 100 watt light bulb I probably could go and um, go down on it but for right now that's what I'm using so it's kind of looking a little like bubbling cheese <laughs> anyway um I'll show you kind of here um a little bit what I got here is kind of what I got um going on sorry the lighting is real bad but there they are um pour it up and almost ready to go so we put this back on the camera or the, the um tripod rather and um, I'm going to move the heat just a little ways away, um, rather it being directly on it. So. In a way, try to. Um, I'm going to get a little bit of a better setup going here. But anyway, for the most part, that's kind of the story and I guess try to wrap it up here in a video figured I'd just kind of sit here and jaw with you a little bit uh, just kind of a rambling video for the combat 86 um, you know this that's what this channel is for um, this is kind of why I started this second channel for those of you that have found it through the main channel the main channel is Batjack JW but uh, this channel was just an opportunity for me to do, I guess, other stuff kind of like this and just where it didn't have to be so like, you know, I guess in a sense pressure, you know, whatever. Um, but, I, I, you know, just a way to share some of this kind of extra stuff that may not be quite as interesting um, that a lot of people may not quite find it as interesting, I guess you could say. As some of the stuff that's on the main channel, Bad Jack JW. So, anyway, yep, that's it. Um, I'll just kind of let's see, leave it that. But um, yeah, we'll leave it at that. Anyway, thanks for watching, you guys. Combat 86 Radio Show. Hopefully, I didn't put you to sleep with this video. It's just kind of a rambling video. So, anyway, if you like this kind of stuff, let me know in the comments below.